hey, I've just had a call from a friend of mine who's a graphic designer who said, I've just had a last minute rush job come in. It's for a garden centre, but I need a picture of some spring bulbs coming through. I can't find any anywhere. Can you help? You bet I can help. So could I help? Well, you bet I can help because I've got some bulbs coming up in the garden and there's some crocus here. Look, just uh, by way I parked my car. So my trusty Benbo tripod is out. I love these tripods. Ben Bolt, that stands for Benbo. There's just one bolt across the middle and everything hangs off it. It's fantastic. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to do a Bob Ross style video. I'm going to talk through shooting these crocuses croci and crocuses I'm not sure and uh, show you how i do it and maybe you could grab your camera and give it a go in your garden too so first up you'll notice the uh, camera is upside down and that's because i want to get it as close to the ground as possible i've moved my flash head over to the side i don't want it to point at the uh, flowers uh, I, I actually want the light coming from behind so i've got a remote uh, flash gun here. I've set it to remote so it'll fire when it sees the fire off the other flash gun. Uh, it's on manual and this one is on 1 16th uh, of power. I'm going to put the other flash gun on remote over on this side on 1 32 power because it's a little bit closer. And yeah, I'll pop it in that bush uh, and we go. Actually, I think you're going to see that, aren't you? <laughs> I didn't need to move that over. The, the exposure on the camera is 2 50th of a second and uh, let's just have a look. I think we're down at something like F8. Um, I'm going to manually uh, drop that uh, background out of focus in post-production. Uh, let's just quickly see, is it in focus? Yeah, zoom in. It's nice and focused. Uh, the colors are good. The light is how I want it. It's 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 giving us those beautiful vein colors. You know, um, the color reflects the light, but it also comes through them because they're so thin and beautifully thin and the color just comes alive. It's astonishing. It's beautiful. It's all a bit awkward here <laughs> on my knees trying to get in between. Uh, compose the picture, make sure it's all okay, but uh, that's what you've got to do. And I'm happy with those. I think we'll just do a few extra flashes around just in case we need to paint some light later. Let's put one behind just to see what it looks like. <laughs> I'm sure that's going to look funky. Right, okay, so into the edit. Let's have a look. First thing you'll notice, they're all upside down, and that, of course, is because the camera was upside down. So the first thing we do is flip them 180 degrees so that we can view them. That looks okay. Uh, but let's try this one. Let's have a look. Yeah, you can see the light coming through the petals. Can you see how there's slightly more light on the left hand side there? And it's just giving us uh, a nice look. Oh, now that's got the same amount of light, but, but that's when I had the right hand flash gun just that little bit too close and it's flaring. I, I kind of quite like that, but that's not what we need for this shot. So let's have a look at a couple of the others. And OK, that's the Australia version and that's the British version. And yeah, I kind of quite like that shot. It's really the colours in the flowers that I'm looking at. Everything else can be altered. Um, oh, yeah, now that's what we want. That's the one. Yeah, uh, you can see there's a little bit more light on the left, but that's how we got them set up. But it, but the, the light of the petals is perfect. That's the one where we put the flash gun behind. Look, and give that real funky look. Uh, not uh, not what we need this time. Uh, so let's let's take the uh, original one. I'll just check that one. And that's nice, isn't it? You can see the colours coming through. Interestingly, what did it look like without flash? What would it look like if it had just taken a picture straight off without flash, just an available light? Well, it would have looked like this. I think you can see as pretty as these flowers are, they haven't got the same um, luscious colours, uh, the beautiful reflections, the light pouring through showing us the veins and the structure of the leaves and even the green foliage at the front look without the flash it doesn't have the reflections and the oomph that you get with uh, putting flash on so on an overcast day like today that's 
what we needed to do. And it's not as difficult as you might think. So let's go back to our captured images and let's start working on our chosen image in Photoshop. And here it is, our chosen image. And straight away, looking at it next to that available light picture, you can see what I'm talking about, the light coming through those petals. It's, uh, it's astonishing. So let's get the crop straightened up and just how we want it. We've got to leave some room for the designer here. There's some text to go over the top and there's some text to go at the bottom, which is why I've left that brickwork in. Um, I have been a little bit lazy here because this is a quite a quick, fast job and I was on my hands and knees upside down on the drive uh, and these little chips of stones here. So I'm just gonna paint them out with the clone tool. Uh, shouldn't take too long. Just go over these and get rid of them all. I'm not worried too much about this because I know the designer's going to put a text box down here, so most of this is going to be hidden. One or two of those uh, branches in the background are irritating me a little bit, so uh, I'm just going to use the clone tool again, and I'll just use a little fine head here, uh, and then what I'll do is I'll get a bigger head there, and even bigger, and mix it up a little bit. Just put one or two in there, so it's not quite so obvious. And don't forget, this is going to have text over the top too. So here we go. Just paint that out. Ooh, got a little bit of leaf there. I'll paint that out. And that branch there is irritating, uh, particularly being a very gray color. It kind of stood out. Uh, that one there as well. That little straw, piece of grass or straw. We'll just take, take that out. I think that's better just so that uh, it's not too distracting. Okay, right. So now we can move forwards. Um, let's just recenter that and square it up. Get it nice and square. Okay, that's better. Now then, what I think we need to do now is start looking at that background. Uh, let's just mess around with the levels. Let's just take them down a little bit. So it's all a bit, um, I mean, those, that's the color we want from the flowers. Um, but the background's gone a little bit darker than perhaps we would have wanted. And also we've got a little bit too much contrast, a little bit too much bleaching out in those white areas. So I'm gonna cut out very roughly, as you can see, just got my cutout tool now. And I'm just going around the areas where we've got highlights on the actual uh, flowers themselves. I'm going to feather that selection. So select feather there, and I'm gonna uh, give it, I think about 50 and go on our levels we're just gonna take the heat out of the whites look there and just bring them in there the colors beautiful color from these flowers coming in nicely perhaps that's a little bit too much yeah, that's it well up the reflection that's just nice isn't it that's just how we want it now we're gonna have to look i think perhaps towards the background and let's inverse the selection and we can lighten the background no no take the take the shadows down a little bit more and that pops the color at the front of the picture can you see how it's popped forwards uh, what i'm going to do is get the magic one tool and, and choose those very dark shadows and then i'm going to go select similar and it will choose all the colors uh, that are similar uh, to that and I'm going to feather them and let's just come down modify feather and put maybe 120 on that we want a nice big feather and now I've got the option I can take it right the way up light if I wanted to that's not what we want on this picture but I can keep some detail look in the mid tones and let the shadows go in a little bit more maybe and we start to get that summer look you see we've got the green coming through now from the foliage and it gives us that nice summer look so i'm just going to cut out now just around the flowers on the top half and feather it again we don't do anything without a feather <laughs> you've got to be light deft of touch when you're retouching so a little gaussian blur i'm going to send that out of focus a little bit to pop the flowers and, and and make them jump a little bit more do you see how they're singing that's nice isn't it 
and the same Gaussian burn that we put on the background, we're going to put on the foreground because we don't want to see this block work. That's not really the picture we want to see. So let's put some Gaussian blur onto that. We just cut it out and oh, that's too much. Yeah, just a little bit. And it just draws the eye into the picture, into where we want it looking right at those flowers. And now I think we need to do with something with those shadows because there's maybe a little bit too much detail in them now. We want to draw the eye forwards to the flower. So let's let's go up to. Uh, no, I know what we'll do. We'll burn them in a traditional darkroom technique. Let's get a burning tool and we'll make sure it's nice, wide and set on shadows. Now we only want to be uh, messing with the shadows here. So as you can see, as I am going over so the shadows are darkening but the midtones and the highlights aren't being affected i'm just adding shadow detail and i can carefully almost vignette like bring the shadows in which again is pulling your eye forwards and we can do exactly the same thing as that with the highlights uh, we'd use the dodging brush rather than the uh, burning br uh, 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 tool so Let's go down to the dodger, so like a lollipop, and we do highlights only, the only highlights we're asking it to do. So and there we go. And I'm going to go across these green, the, the uh, flowers look, and I'm just going to paint the, the highlights up. Just get those light colors, just those little reflections from the flash to ping. Look at that. They're really coming alive. Look at that. Just nice and carefully, just getting the color in there. And maybe we can do a little bit on the foliage at the back and just bring the highlighted parts of the leaves. Look there. So that they're not muddy. Look, just bringing the near ones out. Can you see that just at the back? Just painting that over there. That's nice. I like that. And now I'm just going to bring a little sharpener in, not too much. I'm going to use Smart Sharpen on this one. Sometimes I use Unsharp Mast, sometimes Smart Sharpen, but I don't have the sharpener on in the camera. I like to put it on post-production. And there we are. They are really, really looking good, aren't they? And the difference between that and the available light version, the one taken without flash with just natural light is astonishingly dull now, isn't it? I mean, beautiful flowers, but nothing like that exciting zingy picture we've got by putting just two flashes on, which is why it's really important to learn how to use flash. Now, there is just one more thing here which doesn't feel right to me. And that's that block work at the bottom, because when I look at it, it doesn't look straight. But when I rotate the image, I can't get it straight. Whichever, whether it's the left or the right, whichever one I do, it's just not right. And that's because the camera wasn't lined up squarely to the block work. Oh, what a shame. It, it, we can't do something about that. Well, we can because Photoshop in the filter tab has got something called lens correction. And we go over to that onto the custom and we've got all sorts of different things, barrel distortion, vertical perspective. But what we want is the horizontal perspective, which will move the camera's view left and right. So it will move the picture as though you were moving the camera towards the left and the right. Here we've gone too far left. And so we move it back over to the right. Look. And now we're too far right and we can just get it into the middle. And even though I was too lazy to move the camera on the tripod at the time, it's because I knew I could correct it very quickly and very simply. And now it's completely straight. Look at that. So we can come out now. It's always worth remembering whenever you do the lens correction, it does add a layer. So you need to flatten the image. So our final job is just to save the image, save, and here it is. So with not too much work, we've gone from this available light picture to the same image taken with the same camera in the same lighting, but with two speed lights, one each side at 45 degrees, pointing back towards the flowers. There was no light in front of these flowers at all. Everything is coming from behind. Isn't that amazing? And let's recap how we did that. We had the camera 
on a tripod, inverted upside down to get down to flower level. Then we had the camera on manual and we took a light reading. We get 2 50th of a second at f8. And then with a flash gun on manual on the camera, we pointed the flash head away from the flowers towards one of the flash heads on either side. Those flash heads were set to remote. They were on manual power. One was set to 132 power. One was set to 116th power. And just use the LCD screen on the back of the camera to tell you exactly what's happening with the exposure. It'll tell you if you need to move the lights forwards or backwards. It'll help you create the perfect lighting. So this was given to the designer. For anybody wanting to know, this was a one hour shoot for a professional photographer like me. So the shoot and the post-production all had to be wrapped up and delivered within one hour. I built it out at a one hour job, gave it to the designer, and this was the design they did. The client was happy, the posters were made, and if you're in a garden center buying some flowers this spring, and you see one of these, then you saw it here first. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please subscribe to the channel.